Did they not like Anthony Rotich with his foot on the line? <laughs> they Maybe? didn't like that. They might be against the rules. That's better, Anthony. We're away. Men's final of the 3,000 metre steeplechase. Three athletes will go to Tokyo at the end of this race. You know, Lee, it is hot out there. You know, it is really hot, and it will affect these men over 3,000 meters. And contrary to popular belief, you don't get cool when you run through that water. So this is going to affect the race a little bit. It is hot, and it is oppressive, and it will build as this race goes on. How about the 31-year-old Don Cabral, two-time Olympian? Could he make it three? That would be quite the feat. You know, he has a lot going on. He's studying for the bar, but, you know, he's confident where he's at. He said he's liked his progression throughout the season. He knows what to do. He's made the Olympic finals twice, so he's comfortable where he is, and he knows his body well. Here comes Hillary Ball right around the outside. He's there with Isaac Updike and chasing Don Cabral. And we see Isaac Updike there. What a year he's had. He actually leads the Americans here with the fastest time of the year. You know, he didn't get a big contract out of college here at Eastern Oregon. And he was working at Fred Meyer. He was working at Dick's Sporting Goods. And he had to really work to keep his Olympic dream alive. And here he is in the final with the fastest time of the year. I, I like his openness, right? The Alaskan says, I didn't know any shoe company execs. I didn't go to the Junior Olympics. I didn't have that kind of typical celebrated path. I just had to find other ways and means to get here. He just had to want it. You know, he had to want it so bad and keep his dream alive. And here it is. He's had such a breakthrough year running big personal bests. And one of the six men in this race who has run the Olympic standard. There's Sean McGordy in the white top. The Bowman Track Club, you see the lightning bolts there. McGordy running second with Bohr. And the story we told you at the top of the show with his spike coming off at the back, had to stop, hook it back up again and play catch up. You know, McGordy is new to the steeplechase this year. He's been mentored by Evan Jagger. He had a great debut. And then he had a second race where his coach, Lane Flanagan, told me he had a little bit of a brain fart and he had a little bit of a confidence issue after that but Evan Jagger really coached him through that and they feel confident that he can run with anyone today by the way that's a great point that you've made Evan Jagger no Evan Jagger here at the trials he is dealing with injury and wasn't ready for a shot at Tokyo you know we see in the middle of the pack there tall lean Mason Furlick hip 13 he has also run really fast this year. He has run personal best in all sorts of different events, but he's really put himself as a contender here. He trains with Nick Willis and Hobbs Kessler in that group out of Michigan, coached by Ron Warhurst, and he is looking to make his first team. He talked about how after the prelim, he can't be nervous for 96 hours. He spent time with family, and he really looked at it as Monday was a little bit of a hard workout, and then Friday is the big hard workout, and the rest days in between are just to relax. Third of the way through this men's 3,000 meter final who is going to go to tokyo they're doing it tough here it is a hot evening in the pacific northwest don cabral leads the way in the men's 3000 meter steeplechase final don cabral has led from the gun the 31 year old from glastonbury connecticut could he make his third olympic team we also see in right up front there, hip number seven kind of flapping. He's wearing long shorts. We see Daniel Michalski, who has one heck of a story. You know, during the pandemic, he was delivering groceries for Walmart, doing online orders. He joined a group called the Working Men's Track Club, and he's pushed his way into a chance at making this Olympic team here today. Bernard Keita is right there also as he leaps over the water jump to draw level with Don Cabral and Keita is pushing the front and pushing the pace. Hilary Bohr is still in there. Mahalski on the inside. Keita has been having a good year. He ran a, a personal best this year. You know, he came from Texas Tech. That's where he ran in college, where he had a great career there too. And he's really sort of taking that step forward this year in running under the Olympic standard, running up front in races and giving himself 
a chance to make this team today. Isaac Updike in the blue and green on the outside. They're running fourth. Tucked in behind Hilary Bohr and Bernard Keita. Keita is one of the six with that Olympic qualifying standard time. It's 8.22, 8 minutes, 22 seconds even. You know, Lee, this is one of the more open races we have at the Olympic trials. There are so many men here who have a legitimate chance to make this team. And now as we see, you know, the, it's going to start cranking here. All of these men are still together. They need to find some separation. Whoever's going to make this team is going to need to be ready for a move to be made, be ready to cover it. You know, they're coming down here now. They're going to have three laps to go. And this is serious racing here. Look on the outside in the red top there, running fourth, that's Mason Furlick. He said one of the most difficult things about this race is keeping your emotions in check. Control yourself, be within yourself, manage your race properly, and you can be there at the end. Well, with two laps to go, Furlick is there towards the end. Yes, I misspoke. There's only two laps to go. So now we're going to see the start really, this, this whole race really start to ratchet down. You know, they can't have so many people together. This is where people are starting to sniff it out. They're looking around. They're seeing how everyone else is feeling. And they know, they know someone's going to press. They know it's going to come down here in the next lap and a half, and they have to be ready to cover any and all moves. Can you imagine if Don Cabral goes from gun to line and gets his third Olympic berth? It would be incredible for the 31-year-old. It would be epic. He looks good. You know, he's done a lot of the work, though, and it is hot. And now we see Hillary Bohr has decided this is the time he's going to go and push through on the water jump and take control of this race. They're coming to the bell lap. Isaac Updike is going with Hillary Bohr. Mason Furlick comes. Here comes Keita. And Mahalski is in the mix as well. There's a breakaway group here. There's six runners who have formed their own group, and it's going to be in half because only three will go to Tokyo. Isaac Updike leads into the bell lap. Isaac Updike is taking this race. He wants this so bad. He's worked so hard to be here. He's from Kakachin, Alaska, less than 9,000 people, and here he is leading the Olympic trials. He's worked so hard. He didn't get a fancy contract out of college. He didn't have that support, and he's kept this dream alive by his own accord. He's run the fastest time by an American this year. He ran that here in Oregon at the Oregon Relays, but he's been overtaken by Hillary Bohr and Bernard Keita. This is going to be such a good finish. As they come out of the water pit, we'll see. This Everyone needs a clean water jump. If you want to have a shot at this team right now, you need a clean water jump. And we see Isaac Updike and Mason Furlick with an epic battle for third. This is it, going for that final spot. And Mason Furlick has overtaken Updike and breaks away. Now Mahalski is giving chase. But it's Hillary Bohr, the 2019 US champion, is going to be going to an Olympics. That third spot is not confirmed yet, though. Mason Furlick knows he's going to pick up, and he does. Gets the third and final spot. Hillary Bohr wins over Bernard Keita and Mason Furlick for that all-important third and final spot and a trip to Tokyo. What a race by Furlick. He stayed calm and collected during the race. We didn't see him that often, but when it came to matter, he was there. But, of course, Hillary Bohr, the champion, you know, he showed this in 2019. He showed that I'm here. He stepped up when Evan Jager was back, and he's continuing that legacy now. But what a race out of Furlick. Such smart and patient racing. He's never been on a stage before where he was ready to make an Olympic team, and he really ran smart, collected, and was there when it mattered in that last 100 meters. Not in a cocky way, in a confident way. Mason Furlick right there on screen said, I know I'm a championship level runner. And he just proved it by getting a spot to Tokyo. Hillary Bohr out in front. Look at this final water jump. And is that where Mason Furlick made his move? You betcha. Absolutely. He came out of that water pit with so much more momentum, so much cleaner. Updike had a little stumble there, and Furlick took full advantage. He just popped out of there, looked ahead, and then he was just fighting for home. We saw Bohr. He looked over. You know, he saw Keeter, and he said, I want to win this, even though we're buddies and we train together at times. I want to win this. And then Mason Furlick was running all the way through to protect that spot from a fast-closing Mahalski. And Bernard Keeter looking around. Just checking it out. He's a two-time Big 12 steeplechase champion at Texas Tech. Well, now he's got a bigger title than that. He's an Olympian, and so too is Mason Furlick. Incredible final stanza to that race. And the Olympic rings proudly next to Hillary Bohr, Bernard Keeter, and Mason Furlick. We'll hear from Hillary when we come back.